Hey guys, Jared here, Magnetic Men's Club. I hope you have an amazing day. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a current subscribe member, welcome back. Good to see you. Today I want to talk to you about drama queens and a situation that came up a couple weeks ago when I was visiting a friend, having a couple drinks with, um, with him and his new girlfriend and some other people that we knew. My girlfriend wasn't there. I was back up in New York. And so I was riding solo. I haven't seen Dave in a while. And so anyway, decided to meet up with him, meet his new girlfriend, and a couple of our other friends were there. So we're at this par bar pub. Dave is a pretty busy contractor specific to lawn maintenance, snow removal, landscaping. He's, you know, he, that's what he does. And Dave, for context, is in his mid-50s, and this girl is like 45, 46. So not much of an age gap. You know, she's a bit younger. Dave has been single, or had been single, for quite some time prior to meeting this girl. Now, they've been together for 10 months, but prior to that, Dave basically was a male whore. I mean, let's not sugarcoat it. Dave, I love you. But... He basically dated around and kind of had that idea that he wanted, he valued his freedom more than he could value and appreciate a relationship. Meets this girl, starts changing his mind, realizing, wow, you know, she is amazing. Let's see how this goes. He kind of put his nefarious acts away and dedicated himself to really trying to make this relationship as solid as it can be. Now, because Dave does a lot of landscaping, he services a lot of single moms who don't want to mow, who don't want to edge, who don't want to snow plow, who are busy kind of, you know, raising their kids and going to work. They might not have time. So, of course, the bulk of his customer base are going to be single moms. A lot of his text messages, a lot of his phone calls come from clients. Great. His girlfriend knew that from the very beginning, but something has happened in their 10 months where every time his phone rings, she has gotten, because he's allowed this, she has to see the, the message, has to grill him on whose number is this, that there's no name to it, and she's actually been caught memorizing the number and messaging those numbers. Do we want to say this is a healthy person? No. Do we want to say this is a person who has traumas that she has not dealt with and she's bringing in old bad habits, old bad traumas into this relationship. Absolutely. Is Dave kind of a saint for putting up with this? Fuck yeah. I've explained to him numerous times this is not a good girl. You think she is, but she needs therapy. And so the point of this video or what I entitled this is Drama Mamas. We are sitting in a public place and I'm meeting her, she seems really nice, Dave seems very happy, our other friends, they're all with couples, I'm the only single person, but that's okay, I'm not there to, to try to date, I'm there to see my friend Dave, meet his girlfriend, and say hi to some of the friends I haven't seen in probably a few years. All of a sudden, this girl, and guy by the way, walks by, and this girl locks eyes with Dave. Watching this play out, she stops and she says, I'm sorry to bother you. Is your name Dave? And he said, yeah. And he looks like he knows her, but doesn't know her, you know. And she said, my name is Mary. You used to mow for me a, a couple years ago. I never specifically met you. My husband kind of paid you and kind of dealt with it but I remember your face I hate to ask this are you able to take on one more client because 
I'm single. She's like, I'm a single mom now. I, I my grass is. She's like, kind of showed like to her knees. She goes, my grass is up to my knees. My lawnmower doesn't work. Like, I don't really have anybody. And she went on a little bit. Like she's called, and up here in upstate New York, try to getting a landscaper right now. They're all busy. Dave says, absolutely. Are you still at the house in Lake Lakeland? She said, yeah. I I, I kept the house the entire time. I see flames and vapors coming off of his girlfriend. And Dave introduced them, said, hey, Mary, this is my girlfriend. Fuck, I don't know her name anymore. They shook hands, ex exchanged pleasantries. So the dialogue now is business. Dave's not hitting on her. She's not hitting on Dave. Dave needs her phone number. Dave puts out her, her from his phone and says, hey, can you put in your number? And then I'll come by next week. I'll mow it and give you an estimate for the following season, blah, blah, blah. Great. It's all business. She leaves with this guy who is being very pleasant because the guy understood social dynamics. The guy that she's with could have been the new boyfriend. He's not intimidated or jealous and he might not have been the boyfriend he might have been a cousin I don't know who that guy was we didn't really meet him but she needed somebody to, to take care of the lawn she happens to come across the, the the old guy or the last landscaper and of course she's going to reach out to him as soon as she left this girl looks at Dave and said did you fuck her in front of me in front of our friends and in front of people we didn't know because we're in a tight setting. We're in an area that's a little bit intimate. People can hear us. And of course, she has to say it loud enough for everybody to hear. He said, no, you just heard the conversation. I used to mow for her. I actually never knew what she looked like and blah, blah, blah. So what she's doing now, she's taking on We've talked about this before in the, the drama triangle. She's taking on the persecutor's role. She's also, you could say, in the frame of teacher-student role, mother-son role. And I'm watching this in real time. She's basically grilling her husband or her boyfriend on a business, on something that has to do with business, has nothing to do with personal relationships but she's turning it in and flipping it as if he did something wrong and he's apologizing for this so he's losing his frame control and I get it he's he's apologizing for this because he wants to calm her down but he did nothing wrong and so in this drama that women are really good at spewing out you have to remember the context of the drama. If there's drama, if there's an outburst, and she's choosing to do it in public, this means she's a low quality woman because high quality women will not put herself or others in a situation where she's spilling out personal information, personal de uh, details, <clears throat> personal questions, she'll save that for private. So automatically I'm watching this. I'm okay. This is not a high quality woman at all. If she can just say these things and continuing to put him down, not just on is that you probably fucked her. I'll never know. This is why I can't trust you going on and on in front of people. She just met and Dave sitting there kind of like a little puppy apologizing after all that you thought she would calm down he apologized we're all sitting there not really knowing how to handle this i kind of knew how to handle this but it wasn't my place so she calmed down a little bit she went outside because apparently she's a smoker she went out to smoke and i said dave i want you to call me in a couple days i we got to talk and he's and he and he did and she comes back inside and she continued, how come you didn't come outside with me? Who do you, are you guys talking about me behind my back? She's literally escalating this when there's no more reason to. Dave doesn't smoke. 
she smokes. Why the fuck would I go outside and smell this nasty, this nasty cigarette smoke? That doesn't make any sense. Why would I do that? And he even said that. He goes, I never go outside. He goes, you know I don't like you smoking. And she then uses that to say, oh, I can't believe uh, you, just because I smoke. Now you don't like me anymore because I smoke? Like, she has gone off the fucking deep end. Maybe you guys have dealt with a woman like this. Maybe you've dealt with a woman in a scenario kind of like this. Maybe not an extreme. Maybe you've dealt with women much more extreme where they're actually getting violent on you. They're throwing things. The reddest of flags, in my opinion, of a very low quality woman, a woman who's clearly been hurt, been traumatized by something in the past of something you didn't do, you didn't cause, and yet she's taking it out on you. This is a sign of a woman that needs therapy. And so when you're dealing with a woman who is willing to engage in public drama, get loud, get defensive, make lewd remarks in front of people she doesn't know, and it's not your fault, different video if you've done something wrong and a woman becomes emotional, that's completely different. I'm talking about a woman in my friend's scenario where she's just becoming irrational, coming un becoming unhinged for no reason. Some of the things that you want to do is engage her in a way that you can diffuse it. Because remember, you're a high quality man and you're, you're on your way to becoming a high quality man. Number one, you may have made a mistake and you picked a low quality woman. We can deal with that later. Once she calms down, you need to get rid of her. But for right now, you have to say face, face in the environment you're in. She's causing drama. She's causing other people to feel a certain way. You need to de-escalate it. And the best way to do that is turning your body completely towards her so that you give her full attention. It's not sideways. You're not staring at her. You're not looking this way. You want to give her your full attention. You want to greet her very calmly, almost very monotonely, and ask her, we need to go outside and have a conversation about this. And explain to her, we're not going to do this in front of our friends and people we don't know. If she won't do that and she keeps hammering and getting more and more agitated with you, well, then you need to actually then amp up your agitation because now you're dealing with disrespect and you're dealing with a woman who doesn't have the mental capacity to go outside with you, doesn't have the capacity to go out and actually have an intelligent conversation with you. You actually, if there's security there or you almost want to do what you want to consider appeal to a higher authority ask the owner or ask security ask somebody can you please call the police she is now being so disrespectful so rude and you can't hit the bitch fuck i wish you could but you can't hit the bitch so you need to find a way to remove her no she will go outside away from all these people and talk to you this is where you need to actually deal with her one-on-one -on -one. Okay, there's nobody near you. You can have a conversation. There's nobody in earshot. You pulled her away. You want to talk to her calmly, ask her what is really going on. This isn't a therapy session, but what you're trying to do is calm her down. Address her concerns at this point. Again, in this scenario, we already know what her concerns are, but maybe having her verbalize her concerns in a private setting will trigger something else out of her that you can use to de-escalate. It's all about de-escalating. In this scenario, you're talking about public drama, guys. I'm not talking about just drama in the house. Public drama. You're a high-quality man. You're making high-quality moves. You don't know who's in that area, so you want to remove and de-escalate the problem, which is your girlfriend or somebody you're just dating, you want to de-escalate that problem so that you can save face, continue on in a positive direction with your friends. Once she comes down and you guys are in a better place to have an, an actual conversation, I would always suggest you do that conversation in a day or two where maybe you haven't put down ground rules. One of the best ground rules you guys can make 
is listen, honey, I love you. From here on out, we are not going to do public drama anymore. And if we do, if you do, if you decide to escalate like you did the other day, here is what's going to happen. We're, we're done. Like, you can pack your shit. If she moved in with you, we're completely done. Because that should be done in private. And so I see this a lot where men typically will cowtail and say anything to the girl during the situation just to appease her and make her happy. No, what you want to do is calm her down, not necessarily make her happy. One of the best things you do is get her an Uber and get her the F out of there. So Dave and I, I'll do another video on what has transpired after that. But this is a good highlight to kind of show that when you're dealing with somebody you have never met, guys, understand this with women, if, if a woman is willing to publicly shame you, to publicly have this emotional outburst when you've done nothing wrong, but she's willing to do that, that is a low quality woman and you have to get rid of her because she's just going to bring you down. She's just going to basically suck the life out of you and she's going to turn you into a low vibrational man, a low quality man yourself. So you don't want that. You're on your path of purpose. You want a woman who, yes, yeah, she might be upset with you, but she will wait and she will discuss that with you in private. She will not bring it up in public. This is all I got in this. My name is Jared Schumacher. This is the Magnetic Men's Club. If you found this video helpful, you guys know what to do. Hit the like button. Hit that bell icon so you know when new videos are being dropped. Leave me a comment. Let me know if this is something you've dealt with in the past. And maybe something you did other than physical, guys. I mean, come on. Some, some comments I get. So let me know a way that maybe you were able to de-escalate the situation but still remain your positive self and maintain positive frame control. My name is Jared Schoomaker and we will talk soon.